No matter where you've been or what you've done, God loves you. It doesn't matter how low you've gotten into the pit of sin. It doesn't matter what's been said about you or what your beginning has been. God is able to raise you up out of that miry pit and set you on a high place. And today on Supernatural Life, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about with my guest, Derek Gates. Derek Gates, you're an evangelist, you're a filmmaker, but you have a powerful testimony that it, 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 it just warms my heart to see what God has done for you. But um, the first time I heard parts of it, I, I was just so touched deeply to the point of tears of saying, God, you are just so good. And I know that there's many of you watching right now that, you know, you're thinking you've got people, friends in your life, maybe children in your life that are in a really dark place. And this show is going to give you so much encouragement to see what God can do in anyone's life in their darkest place. And that's your testimony, isn't it? It and is. You are the author of a book, From Death to Destiny. Yeah. And I love this, and we're going to hear your testimony shortly. But um, also, you've uh, made films. I mean, you just stepped out in faith and done it. You've pastored, you've planted churches, yeah. you, you have um, taught the body, you have encouraged the body. And I just want to thank you for your life and ministry oh, in the thank Lord. You. Thank you. But why don't you share some of your testimony? Um, I found it so powerful because I feel that right now there's so many people that are in dark places, maybe not exactly the same as yours, but when they hear your testimony, they'll know that God sure. can pull anyone out of anything. Yeah. You know, I tell people all the time, everybody has a testimony, you know, um, it may not be as colorful as others, but, but when it comes down to it, it's the same. We're lost and we're found. And, you know, me, I, I was, I was raised in an environment that took me down a very dark path. And, um, when I was young, I, I started to have sex when I was nine, started doing drugs when I was nine years old. Um, it was uh, with my babysitters. Now, at the time, I thought that was great because I was a boy and it was it was my idea of what life looked like was perverted because of the lifestyle that I was raised in. Was the babysitter introducing you to it or? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So the sexual stuff was all my babysitter and 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 the, and that family that was there and it, it was just a very perverted thing and and, and that was uh, your normal that was my normal yeah. that was my normal and so i grew up with a very skewed look of, of what even sex looked like and uh, which carried over into you know my teens and into my 20s but you know but um you know the drugs that you know you, i started smoking marijuana when i was nine and then uh started doing powder drugs cocaine meth when i was 12. wow and then you know before you know it you're just so far gone that you don't you don't know if you can even come back you know everything about my life was so dark and can and, i ask you a yeah. question sorry to no it's right. interrupt i'm just curious when i mean nine years old is really young and obviously you had some help. Someone was introducing you to that, sure. right? And so, but did you ever know in your in your soul, did you know it was wrong? Yeah, you know, I, so one of the things I remember was uh, I was in school, you know, in the 80s during the just say no, you know, the the drug, um, you know, era, Nancy Reagan. And, and I remember you know, coming home from school and say, I'm never going to do drugs. I remember that um, real young and I nine's real young, but I remember even younger than that saying, I'm never going to do that um, because my parents were, were, were drug addicts and, and I just did not want to be like them. I knew it was wrong. And my experience was that one exception led to another exception. And before you know it, I don't think anybody sets out to be a drug addict. I don't think no, anybody exactly. woke up one day and said, hey, I want to be addicted to drugs or I want to be addicted to pornography or I want to be addicted to eating, whatever the thing is. I don't think you ever set out to do that. Right. It's one exception leads to another and to another. That's such it, a good point, Derek, because it's so true, right? Yeah, it's When so you true. cross a line, it's almost like in the spirit, when you cross a line, there's another demon waiting for you that is stronger than the one that you just yielded to, right? Absolutely. It's absolutely right. And every time you cross that line, you give you give all the authority mm -hmm. away. You just hand it over. I, I often tell people, I'm like, look, the, the enemy only has power that you give him. That's all, the only power. But when, when you make those exceptions, you're literally handing over like the pink slip to a car yeah. to him to use you in whatever way he wants. And that's what happened, you know? And before you know it, you're just in a dark place. And before my story was over, 
you know, I'm now living across the border in Mexico, transporting weapons, drugs, and, you know, everything else, uh, oh, women wow. across the border, you know, running my own crews through the whole Midwest. When was that? Well, that was in, in the 2000s, in the 2000s. And that was, you know, after college. And it was just a very wow. dark time. I didn't so set out to do that. So you were still a very young man. Very young, very young. I, you know, I started doing this type of things when I was 18 and, you know, all the way into my, you know, mid 20s. And um, nobody ever, I didn't want to do those things. It's just one thing led to another. And it's, it's almost stepping in quicksand. I stepped in it and I didn't know how to get out. Right. And it just sucked me further and further down into this black, dark place. And if it wasn't for Jesus, he comes in and he crowds out that darkness, you know, yeah. it was so dark, but he does anything he can. He's never done with you. He never throws you away. He never. always, he always has the hope yeah. for you. And if it wasn't for him, I'd be, I'd, I'd be dead. Oh, wow. What about spiritually? Did you ever hear the gospel or did you ever have anyone reach out to you, um, whether in, in the Lord or maybe from the dark side there? But um, what about your spiritual life? Was there, was that existent? Yeah. Um, so when I was seven, I was an atheist um, growing up. And when I was 17-ish, I went to a, uh, the only reason I went to this youth group was just because the girls were there. <laughs> and uh, these girls invited me to go to this concert. I went and it was a Carmen concert. You know, most people probably know who Carmen is. Uh, I had no idea who it was. That wasn't my thing. And, and he gave a salvation message at that, at that event. It was um, back when he did the big stadiums and we were in the nosebleed section. And when he gave that salvation message, it pierced. I mean, it was like, wow. it was like somebody drew an arrow, and, you know, mm -hmm. just shot me straight through the heart. And I knew what he had was the answer to every single thing that was wrong in my life. You know, my parents, my, the drugs, the, the, everything about me was so dark. Um, you know, I'd been trying to commit suicide off and on since I was young. I'm 17 and a half and I already tried to commit suicide three or four times. And I was just so depressed and I knew what he said was real. And when he gave that invitation, I was the furthest away, but I was the first one to the stage. I was dropping down levels Come and on. I knew whatever it took, I had to have what he was talking about. And I gave my life to Jesus that day and I meant it and I meant it, but I didn't know I was so, I didn't have anybody. And you were a teenager then? I was a teenager. I was 17 and mm -hmm. I just didn't have anybody to help me with it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, oh. that's why I believe fathering and mothering is so important. So important, which is what you do a lot of now. Yeah, we do a lot of that now. And um, uh, and, and the reason is, is because I know how, yeah. how, how confusing the enemy can be and how he can twist things. He's the liar, you know, and he'll, he'll deceive you. And and it happened to me. So, you know, I gave my life to the Lord. It, it, you know, lasted about a year and a half before I was back into the world. And, and I had just given up. I thought some things had happened in my life. I thought it was God. It wasn't God. Mm -hmm. it, it was that, but that's what the enemy convinced me sure. of. And so I ran and when I, when I ran, I had no intentions on ever going back. And especially if you don't have good mentorship, right? Yeah. And it's, you, you'll oftentimes go to what's fam familiar to you. I was, I'm, I'm mentoring someone right now and, uh, you know, she's coming from a very uh, broken background and everything. And one of her things that takes her down every time of crossing that line over again is um, relationships. Oh, yeah. And I said, why is it, do you think, that you gravitate to the same kind of relationships that took you down years ago? And uh, she didn't have an answer for it. And I said, because it's familiar. Sure. And you really do have to break through that to to get a new um, quality of friends um, yeah. and and not go with what feels comfortable, but go with where God is leading. Absolutely. And so tell us about your breakthrough. Well, my breakthrough came, uh, I, I had been living in Mexico. I had, I had just pretty much just given my whole life over to the enemy. And, and, you know, I, I won't glorify the devil with the, with the stuff, but it was very violent, very bloody, very violent, very disturbing. Um, we went the distance on what it meant to be unsaved wow. and I died. I had a drug overdose one night. I, I did a gram of, of methamphetamine and cocaine. It's called a speedball. It stopped my heart. I was fortunate enough to where people were too afraid to just let me die because of who I was. They, they thought that somebody else might kill them if they let me die. Wow. And so they, um, they took me to an emergency room, threw me out at the door and I died. 
Um, I, I remember so specifically when I stood over my own body in the room and this is where I lose most people. I'm like, I don't care if you don't believe me. That's my story. I know what happened. Mm -hmm. I stood over my own body and then I saw hell come in the door, come come from the corner, just crowded into this place. And I just knew, I just felt anything that God had ever done in me, anything that was good was being sucked out of me. And, um, it was the most despairing feeling that I could ever feel in my life. But then a light came into the room and I just had a knowing that it was Jesus. People ask me what he looked like. I don't, I can't tell you what he looked like. I just saw a light and a figure and I knew, I just had this knowing that it was him. And I said, I said, look, I know where I'm going. I said, but if you save me, I'll serve you for the rest of my life. And, and I meant it. And so he breathed his life into me. I had the exact same experience on my deathbed and Jesus came to me and the same, I didn't see him in a full vision, but I knew it was him and I knew his arms were stretched out. And I said the same thing. If you, if you give my child and I, because it was, you know, during a night when I was giving life to my child, he says, um, uh, you know, I said, if you give my child and I life tonight, I'll serve you for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't, I didn't know anything about him really or how to get saved but that cry was there and that cry was in you yeah and i think he puts that cry in everyone yeah it was just it was just in me um it's just beautiful it's just i felt his his love i felt his his passion for me in that moment Mm -hmm. and i just knew that i had chosen all the wrong things but i but i still knew that he loved me enough to come into that room after i had given it all up and laid it all out for the enemy that he still wanted me back. Uh-huh. I just, don't you love Jesus? He is, that's exactly what he is like. It doesn't matter how far you've gone. He just wants you back. He wants you back and he'll hover over you and be there until you give him that heart, until you give him that place in your heart. And um, I know that there's some of you out there watching this program right now where you're thinking, I've gone too far, I've crossed the line. No, Jesus is still there. He wants you back. He wants to receive you back fully to himself. And he'll just love you back to life if you'll let him. We're going to take a break in a moment. But, you know, Derek, I just want to say this. is like you're telling us about how you were a drug addict, how you were sexually immoral. Um, I know a bit of your, you know, story about how violent things got and you know, there was blood everywhere and all that and doing all these wrong things that were so harmful to so many people. And yet look what Jesus has done with you because honestly, you're one of the most gentle people I know. And you are just such a bridge builder and such a peacemaker. You would never know that you were ever in that kind of violent life because you just radiate his love. The love that he showed you, you now show others. Yeah. And he has done such a beautiful job. It's just hard for me to actually believe that you were ever there, but I know that it's true. And again, viewers, we want to let you know about his book. It's From Death to Destiny. But there's also a little warning here. It says parental advisory because there is explicit content. So there's a little warning there. And, you know, the Bible actually is full of some pretty explicit content sure. in a way, too. But um, you're telling your story here. So this this is a great tool to have available for people that you might want to reach out to. Sometimes people are afraid to evangelize because yeah. they don't feel the boldness. But you can always get a book and, and use it. Yeah, I wrote that for the people, for the lost. Yeah. I didn't write it for the church. I wrote it for the church to begin with. God told me to throw it away and start over All right. because I want you to write it how it happened. And so that's what I did. Wow. Well, I think it's an amazing tool um, to just let people see Jesus, let them know him and what he can do for a life that's gone down so far. Thank you for sharing your testimony. We're going to take a break right now, but we'll be right back. Well, welcome back. We're having a wonderful conversation with my friend Derek Gates and listening to your amazing testimony. Derek, I'm so grateful that that you've been saved and out of that dark place. But you have for many years now, I mean, you made the devil sorry he ever tried, <laughs> right? Because yeah. you just got so passionate for the Lord. And tell us a bit about what, you, what happened to you because you, you have been serving the Lord in so many different ministry capacities. Sure. Yeah. So 
it, it took me about six months or so coming out of that to be like, okay, God, I really mean it. But when we, when, when, when I hit the ground, I hit the ground running hard and uh, we've done many different things, you know, as an associate pastor at a mega church for a while, as I kind of learned the ropes and went through school and, and different things. But today, you know, for the last, I would say 10 years, we've pastored churches, planted churches. We planted 38 churches right now. Um, ministry schools, we've ran ministry schools. Uh, you know, um, for the last three years, I've traveled full time, itinerant ministry. And, um, you know, today we're in Los Angeles where we're uh, pursuing media, entertainment, and uh, that aspect of what we believe God is doing with taking um, the seven mountains back. Uh, we, we believe we've been mandated with media and arts and entertainment. And so th that's a lot of what we we're, we're doing. And with even interns, we, you know, I really believe just like earlier, I was talking about um, the fathering and mothering aspect right. is gone. Um, you know, people are just lost. We're, we're trying to uh, really encourage people to find fathers and mothers. And we can't encourage other people to do it if we're not willing to do it. Right. So we have a lot of internships and and just try to father and mother people and, and really give people a strong foundation to stand on mm -hmm. before they hit full-time ministry. It's, you know, so many people think it's just, they're just getting in it to be yeah. a rock star. We want them to really know what it means. Right, and that's dangerous if you have a celebrity mentality and you go into sure ministry for sure, because to be a true minister, you forsake all really, like you yield your heart to the Lord yeah. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Be willing. I just wanna grab this for a moment because you have been making films. You mentioned that you're involved in, you know, uh, media and entertainment yeah. um, in industry. And you um, uh, produced this film, From Death, a movie about raising the dead. Yeah. And that's exciting because it's one of our mandates for the gospel is to raise the dead. But I love it because you were raised from the dead. So you have authority to bring yeah. forth that uh, message. And so yeah. thank you. Thank you for doing that. Oh, and, thank you. And you can, you know, go online uh, to Derek's uh, website and, and find out more about that. But tell me about the filmmaking, because um, not that long ago, you were like, you know, really filming real like stuff that was going on, like back in the day when there was riots and mm -hmm. in L.A. Not that long ago, uh, you were there with the camera. Yeah, yeah. So you know the media aspect. So we're we're doing feature films too, but the media aspect of it is is we want to create content that's relevant to things that are happening, and also truthful content. You know, I believe I don't think it's a secret that you can't hardly believe what you see on the news. Right. And so we did things like even going out to the riots and filming what was happening right now. Um, and really get the, the truthful perspective of what people are really saying. And, um, you know, our desire is to see God brought into all media, right. including the news, including arts and entertainment, and, uh, and to be culturally relevant to things and be sensitive to things that are happening right now. And you can't be culturally relevant and sensitive to things if you're not willing to dive into it yourself. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to put our, you know, our money where our mouth was. We lit, I mean, I was standing 20 feet, maybe 15 feet from a police car that blew up. Mm -hmm. You know, we were right there. And uh, I wouldn't recommend everybody do that, but it's something God is doing. He is, he's, he's resurrecting that ministry of being on the front lines of those type of things. It's so good. And you, of course, are an intercessor as you're there too, yeah. because when we're on the scene in, in dark happenings, we bring light. That's you absolutely know, even if right. we don't say a word or do anything, we still bring light. But um, you've got a great interest in reaching, you know, people that are, you know, like homeless or, or drug addicted. And you're not one that just says, oh yeah, I've got this testimony from my past. You actually have gone out, I mean, often and and just reached those with the gospel. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we, so we, you know, we travel a lot and we preach at these big churches. I want them to understand that it's not about this building. It's not about that. What it's really about is taking it, th this equipping that we're giving you and taking it to the streets. So. I just had always felt like I didn't want to be another minister that just talked a big talk from the pulpit and didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And so when we take our internships in, part of that is they have to go to the streets. They have to go to Skid Row. They have to minister there yeah. because if you can't minister to the least of these, then you can't minister behind the pulpit. And, um, you know, my wife has done amazing things with prostitutes over mm -hmm. the years. And we just really believe um, in, in, 
in doing that kind of ministry and because God has, God never yeah. gives up on those people. That's right. And you and your wife, by the way, are such a beautiful team and you know, your family. That I can you do have without and, them. You know, you're just all moving together. And I love the way that you've trained a whole team and that you work together and bring people into a real family. Because I think that's what people are looking for today too, is like a family environment, you know, someone yeah. who will really love them to life. And you do that really well. I have a couple of questions sure. from viewers I want to ask quickly. Um, what would your advice be to someone who aspires to make documentaries the way that you do? You just have to do it. You're <laughs> never going to be ready to do those type of things. Um, you're never going to have enough money. You're never going to have the budget. You're never, you just have to jump into it. When God says to do it, he will provide it. You have to do the best with what you have right now. If that means you start off with a phone and just a passion to, to hear mm -hmm. a story, just do it and God start, will ride the yeah, way. That's so good. Just get started and then pursue excellence in it because you'll keep growing into excellence the more yeah, that it's you do the, it. It's the best that you have with what you have right now. Right. If you do the, if you use the, the best that, that you have and do the best with it, God will provide even better the next time. Right on. Another question from a viewer is, um, what would you say to someone who is currently in a bad place, such as drugs, alcoholism, etc., and doesn't believe that they can come out of it? I, I would say this. I know. I know what it feels like to be that. And I'm, you know, even if somebody's watching right now, you know, I'm telling you that God never gives up on you. He never gives up on you. Mm -hmm. It is possible to do it. And I mean, the fact is, is that we can't do it our, ourselves. Right. I couldn't have done it myself. I could not have done it. But Jesus can. It's through his might and by his power that we can do it. Acts 1a says we receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. That's where we draw from our power. So good. That's what that's what happens. And you know, I walked out of the hospital that day and I never did drugs again. I never touched him again. He delivered me and right. he can deliver them. Right. It's so good. And I, I just want to say, never give up. Never give up pursuing your freedom. Before I was saved, I had a horrible uh, smoking addiction and, and other addictions, but you know, a horrible smoking addiction. I used to smoke uh, two packages of cigarettes a day. I would even wake up in the night to have a cigarette mm -hmm. um, because I couldn't get through the night without it. Uh, it was just um, a horrible thing. And I did feel bound by it, even though, you know, I love smoking. I hated it. I had a love hate relationship with it. I must have quit maybe over a hundred times easily, easily. <laughs> oh yeah. Over a hundred times I would quit and then I'd, I'd fail and I'd start smoking again and then quit again. And I would always want to quit, but I never made it. But this one particular time is when I finally made it. And I just want to say your, your final time is available to you if you don't give up just press in and there's a moment that's going to come i just feel that like this word is for someone in particular the moment's going to come when you will not turn back again that you will look back and say this is ridiculous it's my my addiction is taking my life yeah it is it is ruining me it is destroying me and I'm not going back there. And no matter how much it hurts, no matter no matter what I have to suffer, I'm not going back. And I see it in the spirit right now, that quality decision that you are going to make is a quality decision that you're going to make. And it is going to come and you will be free. The end of it is at hand. Just don't give up. That's right. Because when we start to identify as, oh, well, it's just the way I am. I guess I'm an addict and we become an addict for the rest of our life. That's right. not okay. Right. So we have to identify with our freedom in yeah. Christ. Yeah. And I, I, I'm getting a word of knowledge right now. I'm going to have you pray for in yeah. a moment. But I'm getting a word of knowledge right now for um, someone that you have been addicted secretly. You are a Christian and you are actually in leadership but you have an addiction and it's a secret addiction and you beat yourself up really big over it. But God is saying, pursue your freedom because the freedom is available to you. And I'm just going to stand with you in agreement and break the power of that addiction in Jesus' mighty name. I break the power of it over your life in Jesus' mighty name. And I speak freedom into you and rise up and take hold of that freedom and fight for it because the addiction's just going to take you down if you don't. You've got the choice yeah. be before you. So go for your freedom. You will get it. Don't let the devil tell you anything else. 
Send now, Derek, I know that there are people um, watching, because I've prayed for people to watch this, that are not right with God right yeah. now. They might have never known Him. They might be backslidden, the prodigals. I'd like you to pray for them. And we only have one minute left yep. in the program. So if you could pray yeah, for them. absolutely. That's great. Father, just right now, right where you yeah, are setting, you, Lord. I can see you just sitting there watching the show. You've been flipping around and, and you're here right now. It's not by mistake. It is not by mistake. God can come into your room right this moment and he can destroy addiction over your life. He can destroy doubt. He can destroy suicide over your life. He can destroy that depression, that morbid depression that haunts you and keeps you up. And I just speak that even the fire of God would fall upon you right this moment and you will be great. You will be all the things that God promised for your life. All those things you thought had passed by you, they are here for you. Your inheritance is waiting in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, that was so powerful. I could feel the anointing on that. We want you all to know Jesus. We want you to know him deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper because he's so good. So get to know him and don't forget to live a supernatural life because he really wants you to have one. We'll see you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Let us know how it impacted you. Send your feedback, testimony, or prayer request today, or ask Patricia a question for a future program. And don't forget, you can continue growing in the supernatural with our premium e-courses. Connect with us at god.tv Patricia, and join us next time for our next episode of Supernatural Life.